Well, do you know for 4am it's actually quite bright, but there we go. We're all loaded up and ready for leg number one, which is Swindon to Paul Harbour and across the ferry over to Brittany. And tell you what, why don't you come with us? <laughs> That is the Garmin Tora 3. For those of you new to that, that is a sat nav that you can put your trailer details in so that it won't take you down roads you're not supposed to go. The large monitor there with the aerial on is for the camera, wireless camera that's loaded on the back of the caravan so I can see what's behind me and particularly useful for overtaking and pulling back in. There's also a dash cam just out of view to the top of the screen there and a rear facing GoPro so we can actually shoot some stuff towards us like you saw at the beginning there. And just beyond the steering wheel there is the TPMS monitor which monitors the temperature and pressure of my tyres on the caravan. Anyway, enough of that. So as we approach pool, um, as you can see it rained, you actually just follow the little signs with a picture of a boat and the car, well actually I think it's got a truck, inside it. quite happy following the signs with the picture of the boat on it but then you have to start paying attention to the road now interpretation is one thing is that a boat or a sandcastle not quite sure but on the next one that sandcastle sprouted some wings so that to me is more like a boat and now we get two lanes with the boat symbol look now you're watching out for signs and road markings And that sandcastle with wings has definitely turned into an actual boat. And then no there's quick the flash, here. and it is a flash. You will see this one as you drive by. And if your passenger reads it all right, it says, hang on, there's avoiding a low bridge to the right, and there, or you can go straight on. Well, that's clear as mud, isn't it? Doesn't even tell you the height. And you take the road to the right here to avoid the low bridge. But if you're not over 15 feet tall, you can carry on, as we do. Now we're very close, we just hang a left. Now, is this the first time that we actually see a road sign and a painting on the road? I think it might be, actually. Let's get what does this sign say? Wait around for vehicles, pull your Ferry and cruise passenger straight on. terminal straight on car parking. Look, car 
bear in mind you're supposed to take all this in with the queue of traffic right behind you so if you have a look at the two pictures of ships one's got a picture of a car in it so we're heading that way that's why I end up in left here during the back of this queue now do yeah condor vehicle check in there yeah because we're not condor vehicles no. Morning. Yeah, morning. Yes, indeed. Any pets on board? Any pets on board? Oh no. Uh, any assist assistance on the Griffin? Nope. Hey. You even get road rage here. Quick, get past the guy with the caravan. Anyway, 13, all he did 14, was tell 15. us what lane. Okay, okay. No, yeah. And now we're straight. Okay. And after a quick comfort break, as we happen to have the amenities on board. And very soon it's our turn. And all we had to do to the nice young lady was present our passports, give her our name, and uh, she confirmed everything back to us. And at this point we also get given another lane number. And we get back and through to what will be the security check. Now here they don't actually leave you an awful lot of room to negotiate this, but they actually do quite a thorough check of the underside of the car, ask you if you've isolated the gas, and actually go inside and check the inside of the caravan. But once all that's done, we're free to move on to the next stage and join another queue. Now what they don't tell you is the two lanes just round this corner merging into one. So what was the point in that? Road rage persists yet again. But luckily this is the last one. The next stage is the ferry. And the guy in orange points where to go. And that's it. GoPro camera off. Or so you might think. So don't forget to unplug your electrics. Uh, the ATC light you'll notice is, is on normally, but um, I've got this unhooked now, so. And the handbrake on, so ain't going anywhere. If you don't, there's a very good chance you'll come back to a flat battery. Quite tight, but there is a Brucey bonus. There's the doors. I mean, far from the front. I'm not wearing food, am I? Not wearing my breakfast. Shut up. The food on here was fantastic. That's it. Very good. It's okay, but Steve's just taking the mickey because uh, I had a few crumbs of croissant on my clothing. But all the way through that breakfast, they were, uh, there was these announcements about turning your car alarm. And I forgot to do that this time. Silly me. But in the menus of the Volvo, there's a, in your scroll, all the way down to the bottom, there's a reduced alarm setting. So you have to do that. Uh, and it says it might have a fit across a ferry truck. For ferry crossings, you should activate that mode because that could also flatten your battery. But luckily, I did remember to take the ambulance and board off the caravan, so uh, it's quite funny because the ATC light is obviously bright green as it should be. So, if you don't forget to take it off and unplug it, you're going to come back to the flat battery. And we have done that. Oh, yeah, you would do that on here. It's four hours, isn't it? Yeah, we've done that after two hours. Yeah. Well, see, you, you don't realise we've been on, on the boat for bloody ages. We have, you know, that's the lava like it's huge. Well, it's second man, it's the biggest man. The biggest the harbour as well. I think it's the second one after Sydney Harbour. Yeah. Look at it, we get there. Yeah. And then we go past Millionaire's Row. Taking photographs, sir. Uh. 
Oh look, they have a progress TV and we are halfway. Yippee! But before you know it, we get called back down. Actually, it was quite efficient and speedy. I'm quite impressed with this end. I wouldn't quite say it's the same story on the way back, as you'll see later. I wonder if that's battery related. And no need to get anxious on the way out. Everything is signposted, there's people there as well, and even in English talk, it says way out. But if you don't understand salty and your French is not very good, a bit like mine. And now is the time to remember you drive on the right. And first port of call is passport control. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. The next stop is customs, right? That'll be a not bothered then. And that's it, through these two gates and you're out. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. Before you get actually out out, you have to go through kind of a chicane type area. But as you can see on here, there are cars and lorries parked on either side of the road. We're still inside the terminal as such, and this is only one direction. So from that point of view, you are protected. But when you get to this petrol station and roundabout up here, this is where the first major roundabout begins to happen and traffic appears. But there just happens to be a timely policeman to show us the way. And this is where you learn to start counting exits. Or perhaps just follow the green portion of that map because that second exit doesn't actually look like an exit. I'm going to go around the roundabout the wrong way. I'm going to go up this way. This way. Hang on. Hang with. Yeah, be clear. Follow that I'm big. I shall be taking up all the road. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Now, as you heard, um, we're not going straight on like everybody else is at the next roundabout. We're turning right, which will then take us further over to the Brittany area. But in order to get to the what they call an N road, which is like an A road. They've got to go through some towny type roads. Um, so this will test out this eight foot wideness of this caravan. Um, but I'm expecting not a lot of traffic here. Ah yes, traffic lights. So we're just about to go around the corner and I'm going straight on, but there are traffic lights. Now on the right hand side here, you can see one that Stop. there's one kind of window height, driver side, and that's the one I should be looking at. And it doesn't go green, amber, red. It just goes red straight to green. Now also one of the bonuses about coming down straight to Cherbourg and over to Brittany area, there are no tolls to pay on any motorways. So that's good. And that's it, it's not very far. The next roundabout we turn right at. However, this is possibly one of the busiest roundabouts known to man. And you just sit there and wait and wait and wait. But I don't know if you spotted a decathlon sign. If you've not been in one, absolutely brilliant. Sports and outdoors, all in one, and Fiona hates it. Now, one other last thing to mention. You will see a sign just like this, right at the very top. We have a red road number, underneath that, two green blue numbers as well. Your sat nav might be showing one of them, probably won't be showing any. It might not be showing all three, but we do end up with multiple road numbers for the same road.
But that's us, we're now on the right road heading towards Wren. And if you recall, we're having to have a stopover site night, which is not far from Le Mont St. Michael, which is the second one down on that list there. And this site is only a couple of hours away from where we are now. And according to the sat nav, should be there about four o'clock. But before we leave, um, I'll let me just show you the front of the sat nav screen because I've downloaded the bird's eye view. That'll be the detailed section of this map. And as you can see, we're just leaving that now. And that's it. There we have it. I hope you found that useful. That was Paul de Sherberg with an eight meter, eight foot wide caravan. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next leg.